Tired of shipping delays and excessive costs? Imagine a solution that would transform global shipping for the entire world. Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Pristine Mega Projects channel. In this video, we'll cover Mexico's $4.5 billion mega project that could replace the Panama Canal at a time when the Panama Canal's future is in question. Mexico's new mega project will use the Isthmus of Tehuantepec Interoceanic Corridor. Forgive my mispronunciations in this video because no hablo espanol, and some of these locations are really a mouthful to say. So I'll call the project CIT for short from now on. This canal by way of train rail project is a major trade development. The Mexican government has committed four and a half billion dollars into the cargo and passenger train system running across this isthmus to connect the Pacific and Atlantic oceans without the need for the Panama Canal. This is a very timely plan, since the Panama Canal could be in danger of drying up soon. For more on that unfortunate news, watch my Panama Canal video next. That video was just posted a couple of weeks ago and will pop up at the end of this video, or you can just grab the link in the description below. Now, let's jump right in for the Battle of the Canals. In the 16th century, the Isthmus of Tehuantepec was considered a good spot for a canal or highway to connect the Pacific and Atlantic Oceans, but it was never built. Once the Panama Canal opened in 1914, rail service dropped. The Isthmus in the Mexican South had suffered decades of social and economic stagnation due to inadequate public policies, official disinterest, and decades-long exclusion of public investment budgets. Finally, CIT project began development in 2019. Starting at Salina Cruz and headed to Coatzacoalcos, the CIT is a 300-kilometer long railway. In 2028, 300,000 transport containers will pass through the corridor, and in 2033, 1.4 million containers weighing 33 million tons will sail through. The improved Line Z railway can handle freight trains up to 65 wagons and double stack trains containing 260 containers or 5,200 tons. So grain, chemicals, and petrochemicals will be transported by Line Z. The government expects the CIT to boost GDP by three to five percentage points once fully operational by 2033. President Lopez Obrador has stated that the project is magnificent and has the potential to attract investments worldwide and will create many job opportunities. The government has already invested $285 billion so far, which is expected to create 800 jobs directly and 2,400 jobs indirectly. Passenger operations just began a few months ago in September 2023, and freight operations began just after that in December 2023. The service will run with two daily round trips for passengers and three daily trips for cargo. The number of trains is expected to increase as the demand rises. The CIT project involves the upgrade of nearly 1,200 kilometers of railway in total. This includes the 328 kilometers Line FA from Cotzacoalcos to Palenque, which is due to open in March and will connect with the Mayan train project. Also being upgraded is the 459-kilometer Line K from Ixtepec to Ciudad Hidalgo on the border with Guatemala, which is due to begin service in July. So, how did this come about? The concept of connecting the Pacific and Atlantic Oceans using Mexico as a pass-through point dates back to the 16th century, when Spanish conquistador Hernán Cortés first dreamed of a passage for both humans and for goods to trade. However, the idea never materialized during his era. Instead, the Panama Railway, which was completed in 1912, served as the primary means of transporting cargo and passengers between the oceans until the Panama Canal opened in 1914. After the completion of the Panama Canal, the prior railway connection through Mexico naturally lost interest and was eventually abandoned. The Panama Railway remained functional until 1998 when the Panama government handed control back to private companies. President Andrés Manuel López Obrador initiated the current project CIT in 2019. The project aims to revitalize the region economically and to improve transportation options within Mexico. The Mexican government anticipates that the CIT will significantly boost the Mexican gross domestic product by three to five percentage points once fully operational in 2033. The CIT project is currently ongoing 
and the entire project is expected to upgrade the 1,200 kilometers of existing railway. The CIT project in Mexico has garnered both positive local comments and environmental and socioeconomic concerns. While the project has been welcomed by some as an economic investment and important job creator, others worry about the impact on the environment and on the local communities. Critics say the project could harm the Tijuana River and create a larger homeless population, which will then ultimately result in more government deportations. So, while the project does hold promise for increased trade and employment opportunities, some fear that the government will seize their land and displace them as the rightful residents. Please take a second to like this video and subscribe to the channel so that the algorithm will show this video to other people just like us. I post new videos twice a week, but Mexico's CIT project will be carrying people round trip twice every day. I wonder if those passengers will watch this video. Future demands for container freight transport are expected to skyrocket, so CIT intends to follow and even help to redefine global container shipping trends. Fleet expansion, supply and demand balance, and global trade dynamics will be frequently assessed in light of the current and emerging shipping market. Replace or complement the Panama Canal? That is the question. The Panama Canal is currently one of the most crucial waterways in the world, serving as a vital link between the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans. It significantly reduces the time and distance required for ships to travel between the east and west coasts of North and South America. By providing a shortcut for maritime trade, the canal has facilitated the movement of goods, commodities, people, and resources across continents contributing to the growth of global commerce. Located in Panama, Central America, the canal traverses the Isthmus of Panama, connecting the Caribbean Sea in the Atlantic Ocean to the Gulf of Panama in the Pacific Ocean. The primary purpose of the canal is to provide a navigable passage for ships, enabling them to avoid the lengthy and perilous journey around the southern tip of South America, known as Cape Horn. It consists of a system of locks and channels that raise and lower vessels to match the elevation of the adjacent oceans, allowing safe transit through the narrow landmass of Panama. The idea of constructing a canal across the Isthmus of Panama dates back to the early colonial period, with explorers and engineers envisioning such a passage to facilitate trade and navigation. The French made the first attempt to build the canal in the late 19th century under the leadership of Ferdinand de Lesseps, but faced numerous challenges including financial difficulties and engineering obstacles. The United States eventually took over the project in the early 20th century after Panama gained independence from Colombia, following negotiations with local authorities. One of the most significant engineering challenges was the drastic difference in elevation between the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans, requiring the construction of locks to raise and lower ships. Excavating through the mountainous terrain of Panama presented logistical and geological challenges, including landslides, rock formations, and dense tropical forests. Managing water resources and preventing flooding in the canal zone were critical concerns, necessitating the construction of reservoirs, dams, and drainage systems. The construction of the Panama Canal was a monumental undertaking that involved tens of thousands of workers from various countries, including Panama, the Caribbean, and Europe. Laborers faced harsh working conditions, including extreme heat, tropical diseases like malaria and yellow fever, and hazardous construction sites. Estimates suggest that between 6,000 and 10,000 workers actually died during the construction of the canal due to accidents, diseases, and harsh working conditions, with the majority of these deaths being caused by tropical diseases like malaria and yellow fever. Comparing the Panama Canal and CIT, the Panama Canal is a well-established artificial waterway, approximately 65 kilometers long, with a series of locks and channels facilitating the passage of ships between the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans. In contrast, the CIT is a newer project initiated by Mexico to create a railway corridor connecting the Atlantic and Pacific coasts, spanning over 1,000 kilometers. While the Panama Canal primarily accommodates maritime traffic, the CIT focuses on rail transportation, utilizing modern railway lines and infrastructure. Construction methods for the Panama Canal involved extensive excavation, dredging, 
and the creation of locks to manage water levels, whereas the CIT involves the development of railway tracks, industrial parks, and associated infrastructure. The completion of the CIT could potentially offer an alternative transportation route for goods and commodities moving between the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans. By providing a faster and more efficient rail link, the CIT may attract shipping companies looking to bypass the congested Panama Canal or seeking additional options during peak seasons. The CIT strategic location in Mexico could also benefit trade between North and South America, offering a direct route for cargo transportation and potentially reducing transit times and costs for businesses. While the CIT presents a viable alternative route for cross-isthmus transportation, it is unlikely to fully replace the Panama Canal due to differences in infrastructure and capacity. The Panama Canal remains a critical artery for global maritime trade, accommodating millions of tons of cargo annually and serving as a key hub for international shipping routes. Despite its potential to alleviate pressure on the Panama Canal, the CIT designed to complement existing transportation networks rather than directly replacing them. Additionally, the Panama Canal continues to undergo expansion and modernization efforts to enhance its capacity and efficiency, which could further solidify its position as a vital link in global trade. Thank you so much for joining the video today. Click the video on the screen now to see why and how the Panama Canal is drying up. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more content, and I'll see you in the next video.